there's never been a better time to have Sirius XM. With even more exclusive content, we've over 150 channels in your vehicle, including the widest, deepest variety of music, ad-free. Root for your team. Get news. Listen to whatever makes you laugh. And hear all about your favorite stars. Your Platinum Plan offer includes more than ever before to enjoy online, on your phone, or at home. Create your own ad-free personalized stations powered by Pandora. Hear ad-free extra channels filled with music and enjoy a favorite shows with Sirius XM Video. Thousands of hours of shows and performances on demand. What you love is on now. Now, there's no question that one of the segments within audio that has absolutely blown up in recent years is, of course, motorcycle audio. Enthusiasts are getting louder and building bigger and badder systems, and the demand is just overwhelming. Well, we've got a new player in town with the most recent introduction into the category that has a little bit of historic and knowledgeable backing behind it. Of course, we're talking about Cicada Audio. We've got our product expert and industry veteran, Larry Fredericks, joining us in the studio today. We're going to learn all about what this new brand has to offer. This is CMA Showcase presented by SiriusXM, Cicada Audio, and it starts now. Hey, welcome everybody, and thanks for tuning in to another episode of CMA Showcase presented by SiriusXM. I'm your host, Ben Wu. Now, here on CMA Networks, we love getting the skinny on what the latest products, the latest technology is. And this brand, we could not wait any further. It's been creating a ton of buzz. And yep, we're happy to have them here today. Cicada Audio, ripping it up in the motorcycle audio world, getting some rave reviews. And we're going to find out everything that's making this brand tick and why it's so hot. But first, we're going to reach out to our good friends and their Canadian distributor. Yes, brand new partnership that we're happy to announce here uh, is with Trends Electronics. And our good friend Grant McFadder, who's their national sales director. What's going on, Grant? Ben, how you doing, buddy? So much news coming out from the Trans Camp of late. It's hard to keep up, but here we are. We're talking about a new partnership. Well, it's funny. I say a new partnership, but is it? Hmm. We're going to find out more. Let's first talk about the category. Obviously, motorcycle audio is on the menu. You know, what is your take, Grant, on the motorcycle audio category right now as it stands? Uh, it's It's... The new frontier, bold new frontier, like start like uh, was it Star Trek or something? I can't remember what it was. Star Trek is the bold new frontier. Uh, it's the the hottest growing category right now for sure. It's it's what I consider the new marine audio stuff. Um, there's there's a few, there's a lot of players in it already, uh, and it's a category that's a lot easier to deal with because we don't, we're not really dealing with a lot of. Uh, factory audio stuff we have to deal with like we do in cars. I think what you're referring to is the complexities of the modern OEM integration scenarios. That, That's a uh, way better way to put it. Well, you know, it, and it is a thing. It is a thing. Obviously, you know, if we take a step back and those of us who have been in the game for some time know that it's a little bit more complex these days with these newer, you know, cars to, to, to kind of integrate and get sound systems into. And one of the cool things, and this isn't just for, you know, motorcycle grant, you know, we said the same could be said for maybe marine and for power sports. It's a little bit more old school, right? We can change the source unit out, you know, upgrade the speakers, add some bass, and, and you're having fun. And I think that's what uh, is, is drawing people the most. It's good for us old guys, too, that we don't have to bend over inside of a trunk anymore. You can actually lean over a motorcycle. It's not so hard to work on, right? So. Right, right. Uh, so now we're talking about motorcycle audio. Um, we know that within Canada, there's a lot of dealers that have kind of um, gravitated towards it because the business just keeps coming in. And like anything else that's passion-based, you know, one rider tells another, shows off another system. Next thing you know, my system needs to be louder than yours. So obviously there's a lot of criteria that's kind of specific to motorcycle audio. And at the same time, challenges about the environment that is motorcycles when it comes to audio. I mean, let's face it, we're talking about Harley Davidson, which probably represents, you know, a big majority of the motorcycle enthusiasts in audio. Loud engines, exhaust, open air riding, lots of things that, you know, audio voltage companies, issues. right? Voltage, yeah, your battery this big, there's so many things going on. So 
this is interesting about the per, the individual who is behind Cicada, and I wanted to spend some time before bringing him on. There's a history there with Trends Electronics and Larry Fredericks. Very long history, even goes back to before my time with with Trends. I've been here close to 19 years. It goes way way back, almost to the beginning, I would think. Uh, Larry can correct me on that, but probably close to back to the early 1990s. Uh, obviously, Larry was with uh, Phoenix Gold at the time, and uh, his history there is well noted throughout the world, throughout the industry, that uh, he was a big part of that company, for sure. So I certainly have some questions and excited to have him on CMA Networks for the very first yeah. time. So without further ado, let's go ahead and introduce and bring on who is the owner of Cicada Audio and le legendary industry icon, Mr. Larry Fredericks. How do you like that intro? I practiced that 10 times, sir. 10 times, huh? 10 times. A little bit more practice, but it's okay. All right, fair enough. I'll take that. I'll take that. Welcome to the show, Larry. Thank you for making the time today. Thank you for having me. So as Grant was uh, so graciously explaining, obviously your history in, in audio and in mobile audio is, 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 is uh, deep. You've done a lot of things in your career, uh, Phoenix Gold being one of them. Um, but the first question I had for you, when I heard about this brand come, you know, the, uh, the press release and all that, I was like, hmm, Larry Fredericks, Motorcycle Audio. So my question to you, Larry, is why Motorcycle Audio? Of all the things you could have went into from your experience, there must have been something that triggered you towards this direction. Well, you know, what was interesting was that, uh, you know, I've done motorcycle now seven years and it was all by accident. I developed some amplifiers for my previous company and it turned out that I didn't design them for a motorcycle, but people started putting them in motorcycle. And I'm like, you guys are all crazy. And they started sticking all this stuff in motorcycles. I'm like, wow. And they don't know shit from Shinola. They don't know anything. You know what I mean? They're doing all this stuff. It's it makes car audio 1978 look new. You know what I mean? Really? So they're doing all this stuff. I have no idea what they're doing. And sticking all kinds of product on a bike. And I'm like, wow, guys, there's a better way to do this. And so as time went on, I developed more product for it and it got to be more interesting. And these guys are very passionate. It's like the old days back in Iowa. These guys are all crazy. They're just doing all kinds of stuff. So I'm like, hey, you got, I like these it. are my kind of people. Let's go. <laughs> so I can go. No problem. So, so there you went. You you set out. You made a decision. You're gonna. You saw an opportunity and um, somewhere where you could be of assistance and really help and improve and kind of innovate. Um, talk to us a little bit about the timeline now since the launch of the brand and the growth that you've experienced since. Well, we. we I actually started 18 months ago, but in reality. This will be my first real year up when we get to January. So in that length of time, I've developed, went from 12 products to 68 products. And when I talk about that, I mean, custom made tooled product, not off the shelf. This is my design. This is not stuff we just go to China and go, yo, make it blue. Cool. Let's make it. Let's do that. Put my sticker on that. it. Mm -hmm. So everything is custom design. And, and the beginning of Cicada was we're strictly Harley Davidson. Now we've expanded a little bit from that, but the bulk of our product is geared towards Harley Davidson and to make solution based. In other words, make it easy, plug and play, simple, but give you the best performance we can possibly give as simple as possible. And like you said, they get these little tiny, tiny batteries and I've guys putting Five to twenty thousand watts on a motorcycle. I mean, okay. crazy guys. I mean, I think the theme of crazy is going to be throughout this presentation, and I think Cicada has answered that crazy call with <laughs> some pretty interesting solution crazy items product. that I'm pretty excited for you guys to to present. Uh, why don't you give us a quick overview, Larry, of what uh, our viewers will expect over the course of the next 20, 30 minutes as far as presentation goes? Well, I'll run through the product, and we have amplifiers, we have speakers, we've got accessories. we got all kinds of things to make the install easier and more pleasant and sound great. So we're trying to build a great sounding product, easy to install, easy to figure out how to do things. And I, as you go, we go through the presentation, you'll see the products make a whole lot of sense. Well, I think we've set the stage. We have the man himself. You're going to hear top to bottom strapping, guys. You want to learn about why everybody's talking about Cicada Audio? Take out your notebook. Here we go. Here you go, guys. Take it away. Okay. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the vision. The vision is car, uh, we're not doing any car audio. We're not doing marine. We're not doing power sport. 
We're only doing motorcycles, only. And to that end, everything is dedicated to that. So I designed the first amplifier, it was the DSP. So I have a four channel DSP, which Grant's showing. And that's a four times 100, four ohms, four times 150, two ohm. And it actually has a built in six channel DSP. So you could hook up front and front fairing speakers, bag speakers, and God forbid, woofers. So there are all kinds of ways to do this. Uh, it's DSP. So when we say DSP, there's software to have to install. So if you're using the DSP amplifier, you have to install the software. So it's both Google and app for uh, Apple. And these are the pages. This is what it looks like, the summing page. Basically, the summing page is just a policeman directing traffic. It's just saying, where does signal come in and where does it go? Then you have crossover, you select crossover. You have delay and gain, you have EQ, and I'm showing you some EQ here. Uh, it's really easy to deal with. It's very simple. There are three videos on the website that walk you through how to do things. So I, if you're going to do this, you really need to do this. It's Again, it's easy, but you have to understand what's going on because there's things called grouping and linking and things like that. So it's, it's pretty simple, but watch the videos. that will make life a whole lot easier. Then here's a system, for example. You could do a very simple system with coax horns in the front, coax horns in the bag with a lid kit, which we make, and one amplifier. So you can make a very simple, very loud bike. Because the problem is you have to get over the road noise. Motorcycles, you have road noise, you got the engine noise. I mean, it's tough to get over that. So if you want to do that, you really need to go horns. Now we make two different series of speakers, so we'll get into that in a minute. But here's another system. This is some mid-bass with specific road glide grills with tweeters built in, and then mid-bass six by nines in the back with a tweeter bridge. So there are all kinds of ways to do this. These uh, those systems designs before you go a little bit further are awesome. If you go onto the, the Cicada Audio website, there's actually a tab on there. It says system designs, and he's got everything from a simple two speaker setup to an eight speaker setup, which is crazy. Uh, and the nice thing about those sheets is it gives you all the cheats cheats on how to do it. It gives you every cable you need, every harness you need to order, everything all on one sheet. And then it's even got all the DSP recommended settings and everything on there. So it's about as easy it can get out of the box other than Larry standing there telling you what to do. It's about as, it's about as good as it gets. I and tried to make it because I really believe that systems are the solution that if you, you go into it knowing what you want to get out of it, then it's way easier to figure out what's going on. Yeah. And these, these the, make it super easy. Super and one easy. of the beauties is that that software has the ability that once you dial in the software, you can email it to yourself or a buddy and if you, God forbid, you're a store and you do multiples of the same bike, uh, unbelievable. Let's say you accidentally do that. You can actually have a system design already crossover, already EQ'd. Just download it, install it, done. So it's really easy. So these are non-DSP amplifiers. So let's say you want to bridge the DSP 150 and you want to run um, another amp in the back bridge so you have big power. So now you're running four times 300 if you want to do that uh, you can do that i make all the cables to interconnect to make it easy so again it's all trying to make solutions now then we have a standalone dsp because we have some bigger amps coming out that are shipping in the next week or two and now you're going to need a standalone dsp which is still based on the dsp that's in the amp but this is eight channels so it's a very small. Do you have it there, Grant? I don't have the DSP here, Larry. I just got the one with the amp amplifier. Can you see me? Yep. So this is it. So it's it's pretty dinky, and I have small hands, so it's really small. So it's easy to to deal with. Uh, again, you need the software for it, and this one's different. You'll notice this one's red and black. so the standalone DSP is red and black. Orange and black. Sometimes people use the wrong software. Well, yeah. Uh, Larry, your audio is glitching Steve. a little bit, Larry. Okay. 
Can you hear me? Yeah, I think you're, you're okay now, I think. So now, yeah. the GUI again, this is the page and the delay, and you can, you can do all your views, and it's parametric, so you can take a slider, pick a frequency, change the frequency, change the Q. The Q is the big thing. If you see this right here, this is a wide Q, okay? So it's a low Q. So high Qs are narrow, wide Qs are low. And it's easier to deal with than a third octave, in my opinion. Our new bigger amps, these are called BDAs. BDA stands for Big Damn Amp. So I've got the 900, the 1400. You'll see the power ratings on these. So very, very small, fits in lots of places that nothing else will fit. Uh, this is a 2,000-watt monoblock. That's what this is. Very small. Nine, nine and a quarter by 5.4 by 2 inch. So but the problem is when you make big power, it takes big current. So get ready. If you're going to do it, you need to add lithium batteries is all I got to say. In fact, it'll say on our webpage on the big amps that if you're not going to upgrade the batteries, don't buy the amplifier because you're going to have problems. Here's a system. So this is a big system. This is a 1400 and a 2000 bridge. So you've got 2000 watts on 10 inch mid bass drivers like these. That's a mid bass. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. I know you don't want. I know they're light. You don't want to hold it up there very long. But can yeah, you feel no that dust kidding, cap? Man. 18 pounds, car. which which I thought was pretty crazy when I built them, but I sold out on them, so I don't know how crazy I can be. Like I said, There's I'm crazy, crazy enough to build it. They're crazy enough to buy it. Yeah. So we go into uh, system designs. Again, like Grant said, I'm trying to make it so that it's simple and logical, that you can see what's going on. Now, this is the heart of the whole system is the CH. This is coax horns. Grant has this, so it's a six and a half inch, a six by nine, and an eight inch. So we have three versions. Now, it's a two inch voice coil on the mid bass and a one point four inch on the tweeter. So it's a it's a bad boy. So you have to make sure if you're comparing these kind of speakers, you're comparing apples and apples, not apples and oranges. Uh, the passive crossover Grant has. And that's a real crossover. And one of the reasons it's built that way, if you see all the venting, one of the things I learned with my past company is I had people melting these things, melting crossovers. That's because they were encapsulated. I had them in heat shrink, so I figured that was not a good idea. So these can cool off. There is also a polycell in there, so it will protect the tweeter. So far, I've shipped over 2,000 horn speakers and have had no blown tweeters none and if you do have it at the end of this i'll show you how to inst install a new tweeter it's really simple so again we have this in six and a half and eight and a six by nine you check out the power ratings on those guys like rms power of 500 watts rms these are not your there. it's not your average coaxial horn speaker that's out there right so now if you're going to use these in in bad weather if you know that you're going to be in bad weather uh, one of the things you need to do is have a uh, lid cover. So now I'm making, which you, Grant doesn't even know, I'm making lid covers. So we have waterproof expanding lid covers with cicada on them that we're going to start shipping with our lid kits. And also with this, because we know you're going to put six by nine, you're going to put in lid kits. Then you're going to do what we laughingly call a cherry strap. This is a, a hinge that Harley puts on their lids. It says Harley Davidson. So uh, we were at Daytona and an installer named Jerry uh, mounted our six by nine and lid kit and then put the crossover on the Harley strap, but he poked holes in it and put tie wraps in it. And I went, you know, I can make a better solution to that. So we did the Jerry strap, which has a Velcro pocket so that you can put the crossover inside. 
So it makes it much easier to deal with. So now you can do a very clean install, really simple. So again, the whole idea is solutions. We're trying to have all kinds of solutions. Now, here's a fully waterproof speaker. This is the CX series. Grant has that also. These are fully waterproof. They do not have the output that the horns do. So this is more like a higher, a little bit higher sensitivity than a car speaker, but not like the coax horn. So it all depends on what you want. If you run it as loud as you can get it on your bike, you want to go with horns. But if you're really, really worried about weather, then you want to go with these because these are fully waterproof and they play really loud. And, and my guys uh, with the DSP and everything else, you can make them sound spectacular. So we make them in six and a half, a six by nine and a five and a quarter. And those are the grills that come with it. So now we have a five and a quarter that works on older Harleys or Indians or Victories or Honda Goldwings. And then this is the Road Glide Grill uh, tweeter kit we talked about earlier. If you use the mid base, which I'll get to right. Uh, let's skip to the mid base real quick. So here's the mid base. So for example, you would use that grill with a six and a half in the, in the fairing. And this goes lower than the coax horns. So if you really want it loud, that's the way to go. Let's go back. So we're going to, this is a road glide, the RGG, and then there's going to be an SG for street glide. So we're going to have both. Those are coming. The street glides will be here this year, Larry, or next year? Yep, they're going to be here in the next couple of weeks. Okay, awesome. Because the problem with the street glide is if you mount the coax horns in the street glide, you need to have aftermarket grills. Because in a street glide, they have a grill already, but if you really look at it on the back, there's a webbing of plastic and it's thick. And what happens, it hits the speaker. So you need to put an aftermarket in there no matter what on any good speaker that you put in a, in a street glide. So you need that grill. So right now you can get them from Hogtoons and a couple other people, but we're going to have it available also. We also have the tweeter, like you're seeing here, the R01T. We have, the, and you'll notice the uh, radio uh, face plug. You'll notice how short it is actually. For this type of tweeter, it's very short. Now, the, the RR075 is even shorter. It's three quarters of an inch in diameter depth, so it's very short. Now, what, what Grant doesn't know is that the next tweeters he receives, I've updated already. So I've already changed them. So the next tweeters come with another ring that has a slot in it, and it will come with a tool. So sometimes you need to have this when you're mounting it in a fairing or something else where you can't get to the front and the back and tighten it up. Also on that tweeter, what I've done is I've made it so that there's two rubber uh, gaskets on it. There's a thin one and a thick one, and that's to shock mount the tweeter if you put it in the fairing because what we found was that the literally the screws on the back of the, the back plate the tweeter diaphragm plate will unscrew themselves because of the vibration it's unbelievable so we lock tight everything that's another thing we do because we know that there's going to be a problem so every little shit thing that has been a problem we've tried to resolve we've tried to come up with solutions Here's another solution. Now, this is the ultra weird tweeter. This is a tweeter that's super expensive. It's made to replace a six by nine in a lid kit. So, because one of the problems is, is that on a motorcycle, the rear is always lower in output than the front, no matter what, because of the road noise. But this is another four to six dB louder than any speaker you could put in a bag. So you put this in where the six by nine goes, this is 110 dB, one watt, one meter. This thing is loud and it's powerful. So the cool thing about this is if you do this and then you do, hang on, I'm going to skip. If you do something like this, typically the problem with this is you need to separate the mid base, this pro mid base from whatever speaker you have in the lid, because this will put out 20 pounds per square inch of pressure. 
So what happens is, is that if you have a six by nine in the lid or six and a half or anything else, what will happen is it turns that speaker into a passive radiator. So what happens is, is the guys like Nagi and Heffy, they make a ring kit for Harleys to mount these. And they also make a seal that goes inside the, the bag to seal off the mid base. If you use that, you don't need that separation. So it makes it an easier install. So everything we do, now these are the mid-base drivers. These are the six and a half, the eight inch, and the six by nine. Uh, if you're gonna build a bike and you want it as loud as you can make it without adding mid-base mid drivers or woofers, then this is the way to do it. These make very good uh, mid-base. And they go down to about, that'll go, that six and a half goes down to about 90, 100 hertz. And uh, six by nine goes down to about 90. So it'll give you, some, and that sounds reasonable, kind of high, but if you've never done motorcycle, that's actually very good. Uh, the tens and the eights in our my pro mid base drivers, we recommend tuning to 45 to 50 hertz in a bag. It'll give you the most bass, and in a small bag, it will uh, sound the best and be the most linear. So there's, all kinds of ways to do this. It all depends on how crazy you are. So here's that lid kit we were talking about earlier. And these are the accessories. Um, Grant has the lid kit. He also has the Pro 4K kit. So that's the template he's showing you right there. So you tape that on the lid and then you cut it out. And then there's the Pro 4. Now what this is, is an eight gauge power kit. Well, that looks like the four gauge. This is the four gauge to eight gauge. This is the HDP G4K. Right. So that's made for two amplifiers is what that's for. Waterproof fuse holder, everything. Yep. Terminal, there's separate ground terminal block and a power terminal block. We also make this in a, four, a Pro 4K kit that has an eight gauge and has all the harnesses. So... If you're going to, uh, again, remember this solution, the, the Pro 4K comes with uh, what's called an HCFIM, front input Molex, rear output Molex, things like that. Those are what you want to use to uh, slam dunk, plug and play, install. Again, somebody will think that going to the TS link, this one, you have the TS link also. A lot of people will say, oh, well, I'll go to the TS link because that, that just plugs in the back of the radio and that'll solve my problem. Well, in reality, it will sort of, but you need a special bike for that one. If you're going to really use that harness, you want a Harley that comes with four speakers already on it, four speaker out built in. Then this harness is great. But if you don't have that, then it's better to use the ones that he's got down on the bottom there, the HTFIM, much easier to deal with, much easier. So it, it all depends on the install. So TS Link is great. If you're using somebody else's amplifiers, TS Link is really handy. With mine, you really need, I would recommend that you get use it on a bike that has front and you know bag, fairing and bag speakers. If it already has it in, then that's the killer setup. So it all depends on the application. See now that now you'll notice there's those black things in the middle. Those are load resistors. That's because newer Harleys, 2017 and up, use Class T amplifiers. Class T amplifiers do not like seeing 10,000 ohm input source impedance. I know that doesn't mean anything to a lot of people. I get it, but what I'm what happens is if you use uh, any kind of input that isn't loaded down what will happen is the radio will work once then the next time you turn it on it goes in protection or there's no audio and it's because it's not seeing a load those are 47 ohm load resistors that makes it so it doesn't care it thinks that's hooked up to the speaker so now this is uh, the warranty on our product and this is also how you fix a blown tweeter but i haven't had any blown ones so I have a whole bunch of tweeter diaphragms laying here. Not a whole bunch. I have like 50 of them. That we haven't shipped to anybody yet because we've never blown one. But ours are easy.
Typically, everybody else's is way more difficult because you have to get this from everybody else. So what you have to do is you have to go in and cut and solder and do all kinds of jive. But with mine, with mine, you just pull the back off and put it on. Done. Simple, straightforward, easy. So again, trying to make it solutions and, and make it better for everybody. Uh, do you have one of the uh, CVO uh, necessary evils there? I do. I have a bag somewhere. There, there's a bag of, of these that comes with five plugs. CVOs are a special animal, so you need bypass plugs. If you're going to do a CVO, you have to have bypass, bypass plugs. So remember that it's very. For those that don't, what's what? A, for those of those that don't know what a CVO is, what is a CVO? There are three basic motorcycles in Harley. There's street glides, road glides, and CVOs. Then there's substructures underneath all those. You know, super glides and this and that and, and STs and other things. But basically, there's three bikes. There's oh, well, there's four. There's Road King too. Road King is the bike that has bags but no fairing. That one's a lot harder to put the stereo on. A lot harder. So, but the ones you need to think about are road glides, street glides, and CVOs. I want to give uh, Larry the opportunity to kind of finish off with these with these key points here, and then we'll get into a discussion. Well, the key, the key point is if if you're going to do DSP, you really need to understand what you're doing. Like I said, there are three videos. On my website, I've had some people on forums write in and go, oh, my God, tuning DSP is like doing brain surgery. I'm like, it's not brain surgery. It's not that tough. But people make it hard. It's actually very easy. So one of the rules of doing DSP is for crossovers, you need to know the FS of whatever speaker you're putting on the bike. Whatever the freer resonance is the important piece of information. So it's real simple. Whatever that is, you need to be above that for your crossover. The other thing is when you're EQing, you want to have way more things cutting than boosting. Boosting is bad. I can tell you that, especially with horn speakers, you don't need to boost a whole lot because they're pretty loud all by themselves. So if if you're going to do, for example, if you're going to do the um, CH speakers and you're not using a DSP, uh, there's a load resistor in there. There's a little white resistor that we give you, and I recommend that you put that on the tweeter because it will lower the tweeter level, balancing it out, making it sound much more balanced. If you have a DSP, you don't really need it because with the DSP, you can fix a lot of things. you got to remember that some people say, well, do I really need a DSP? Well, you don't really need a DSP, but if you look at everything that's been – been out there right now everything that's out there if you think about all the bluetooth speakers that you can buy at best buy go down the row of a best buy and look at all the bluetooth speakers every single one of them is blue is dsp every single one any car since 2018 is is dsp every car so just so you know dsp is the future then First event. I definitely want to comment on that. Let's go ahead and uh, take down your presentation. First of all, thank you for the very in-depth presentation. Wow. Uh, I did not know that the Cicada audio line was that complete to include everything from accessories to wiring harnesses to different really application-specific solutions like the lid. Um, what is that? The, the Jerry the Jerry rig? Did you, Jerry you strap. It? The Jerry strap. Yep. Something as, 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 as innovative as that. Jerry Springer. <laughs> yeah, it just, you know what, this for me, I'm going to come back to DSP, but I want to make a statement here, Larry. Uh, you went out and you took it seriously, and it shows with the lineup that you have come up with. And I know there's probably a ton of other products which are sitting in the lab in the back you can't talk about yet. But just, I mean, it's been a year, bro. A year. Like, that is crazy that you have that much product in one year. So, I mean, the, the juices obviously are flowing from an innovation side of things. 
and and we see it because you know on social media your, your stuff is out there there's no question about it and now that i understand a little bit more of the design elements that you have going in and and that you know the solutions based kind of mentality that you're putting behind the design it it totally comes through now let me answer your uh, let me comment on dsp my first question was do you really need dsp in motorcycle but then you kind of explained that and here's what i have to say after hearing what you said if a customer is about to spend the kind of money they're about to spend with this type of gear, like this is not $69 coaxes. You know what I mean? Like these are some serious, serious items. Uh, the dealer owes it to the customer to optimize the performance of that sound system. And by optimizing, I mean digital signal processing. Agreed. Period. Absolutely. You, How dare you charge the, this kind of money on a bike if you're not 100% delivering the optimal performance of said equipment on that vehicle? That's what I have to say about that. Is it hard? Yeah, it's it's not easy. Is it rocket science like you? No. So learn it. Uh, you, your Canadian dealer, call Grant. They will set up training sessions for you. Your American software is super easy to use. I mean, it's on your phone. I mean, it's not. I mean, you're not pulling out a laptop. You're not pulling out your PC, except if you're doing the standalone one, maybe. But the, the app, I would use the yeah. app on the phone. Well, just based on, on that, the screenshots that on I that see. Note, yeah. On that note, by the way, there are some old school guys that still really want to use PCs. They really, 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 really got to use a PC. So you know what? I'm going to upgrade all the software. I'm going to have everything is going to be both Bluetooth and PC. There you go. So I'll, right I'll now, you, right now the app is available, but you're saying a desktop PC version is on a desktop way. PC. No, no okay. Apple. Fair. Now, I, I wanted to kind of tune in on something you said. What DSP provides bike builders from an audio perspective is you're right. You can save the file. And guess what? It is a repeatable and predictable result because you you said it yourself. There's only how many models and platforms that you're dealing with. You're not talking about thousands of different cars as far as environment and platform. You're talking well, about think, basically. Well, think about it. Remember, remember, we're looking at a DSP that has eight channels, right? And everybody goes, "Ooh, eight channels! Oh my God, I have so many channels." I go, guys, if you put six and a half in the fairing and tweeters and you buy amp that, that's four. You put six by nines in the back and tweeters and you buy that, buy amp that. You already that's, use eight channels. You you're already anything. at eight channels, 100%. So that's why I'm going to have a 12 channel out next year. So. Fair enough. I was just going to say, but what if I want to put know your I mean? eight inch, like, you know? inch mid bases? And anyways, okay. So having said that, are there available from uh, from Cicada uh, preset or, 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 yeah, preset tunes um, yes. based on these system designs? Yep. Yep. And there's more happening all the time. So what's going to happen is as as we move into the new building and I have some space and time because I'm not going to be generating new product like crazy. I mean, soon I will have a lot of product. I mean, I'm developing a bigger than a 2000 watt amp. I'm built going to do a 5K just because, again, these guys are asking for it and they're all nuts. But you know what? If you're crazy enough to buy it, I'm crazy enough to build it. No problem. <laughs> I, I love I it. I love that. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to comment on your design elements. You know, you you spoke to how um, you know this is not stuff that you're shopping, uh, you know, in an offshore uh, flea market and say, hey, can I have that in orange or and and black and put my name on it? You are creating stuff. No more is that true. No, look no further than some of the design cues. Uh, look, look at the center dust caps that match with the tweeter design. That there is purpose behind these designs. And I think, <clears throat> Larry, you've gone overboard on expressing that. But what 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 I think comes through here is that higher end custom feel. Like there was, there was real thought and and intent behind these attention designs. to detail. Yes, a hundred percent. I I have to take a minute and 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 comment on that because obviously I I sit through a lot of these presentations and you know you can kind of tell when it's like yeah that speaker looks a lot like that other speaker. Well, you that know what frame, I mean? by the way, that Grant had. Is yeah, a, off the, is an off the shoe, off the shelf frame. Now I'm designing my own new frame. Oh, let's see. This is why I like having Larry on Grant. This guy, he just goes and pulls it like that. He, he holds, he holds back on us. He doesn't tell <laughs> us about the stuff he's doing. Yes, absolutely. Let's let's go full screen on this. Let's see what are you showing here. So Larry? this is a new six and a half that we designed. That but I'm I'm contemplating my navel here. I'm trying to figure out if I'm really going to build this thing. The reason it's it's a problem is because the girth. 
right? How big it is. If you look at it versus the six and a half, it's very big because this is a two and a half inch voice coil. So this is a real crazy holy shit speaker, right? That, two and a that's half a power handling beast, right? Power there. handling beast. It'll be carbon mm -hmm. fiber. It'll be waterproof, and the horn will be waterproof. This is uh, a new line. That's a waterproof out horn called CHX. Okay. So what's Extreme? going to happen is this will be waterproof. Because we figured out, remember, uh, if you think about it, some you've probably heard people taking their iPhones and getting them nano yeah, yeah, yeah. to make them waterproof, right? Well, there are machines that do that. They're from Germany. They're as big as my office. They're a million dollars. And you can put any almost anything into this machine and nano, nano it. And we have some material cloth that we nano impregnate that we put over our tweeters that's happening right now. So even Grant hasn't heard this, but you see that black in the center? Well, that's actually uh, stainless steel. There's a stainless steel plate and then that material on top of it. And this is, I designed this so that there's actually holes here. You see these holes? Mm -hmm. And this is so when it's in the bag, what if it if it accumulates water, water drains out. Now, somebody will say, "Well, wait a minute, it's going to drain in the bag." And I'm like, "Okay, so here's here's the two evils: kill the tw kill that fourteen hundred dollar tweeter, or get a little water in your bag. Mm, you choose. You could also you could also you know put I mean? a small drain hole in the bag. Yes." Just saying. So, I mean, I, <laughs> this is I got all custom to this is called a truncated horn, like JBL kind of stuff, mm -hmm. because I can tool that stuff and I can design that stuff. This this aluminum piece costs six thousand dollars to tool on something we're going to build 200 of. Wow. You know what I mean? Because we're crazy. I you know what you know what I love about life. this experience, Grant. I want you to comment on my next comment. We are talking directly to the guy who's building, designing, coming up with this crazy ish, as he calls it. This is very yeah. unique of an experience, and I'm sure that would be the same for a retailer who would be dealing with this brand. When I when I saw this, you you told me about the name first of all, and I'm like, what the hell is Cicada? I'd never heard of it. And then for the I record, on, I'm the one that brought this to trends. Just you know, and I, I, I went on Facebook and I looked up Larry <laughs> Frederick, and I saw he was putting his stuff on there about Cicada Audio, and he had some pictures of pretty cool baskets and tweeters. And I said, well, if Larry's involved, God damn it, I got to be involved. And <laughs> and just because the man is, he's a no BS kind of guy. He'll tell you how it is, and if he screwed up, he'll tell you. And if he's done something great. He'll really tell you about it. <laughs> yeah, uh, Larry, He's, share us, share with us a little bit about some of the feedback that you really appreciate from some customers that you've had since. Yeah, I mean, you know, whenever you're launching a new product, there's always going to be that curiosity. Like, how are people going to like it? What what type of you know are they going to enjoy it? Is it saleable? Well, well the feedback has been uh, pretty spectacular, and it's been spectacular from pros too, from the guys that do retail. You know what I mean? So there are a couple big name retailers out there in our in in the united states i mean there's guys a guy in new jersey carlos i think we all does, know carlos from nba he does 50 bikes a month it's crazy he buys it, more he buys more of the, that stupid 10 that crazy 10 he wanted to buy everything i built i'm like no <laughs> he goes i'll take them all i go no he goes well who else knows how to use these i go well you're right but I want to spread the wealth. Right, you know? right, 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 right. I want there's to spread a great, the wealth a little bit. You know what I mean? So there's, there's a great video on the landing page of the Cicada website, and at the very bottom of it is a video, YouTube video of Carlos, non-sponsored. I'm sure it was completely honest opinion, uh, and he goes on there, and he was you know, the whole video. If you watch the whole thing, it's worth it. I don't know. It's not very long, seven minutes or something. But he goes, you know, I need another brand of audio stuff for bikes, like he needed a hole in the head. And Larry said, I'm going to send you some stuff anyway. And he sent it to him. And he says, I tried it out and I had to be a dealer. He yeah, says, he I've wasn't going to be a dealer. He didn't want a, anything to do with it. a bunch of brands, but I don't need it anymore. But no, it didn't. was so good. He said, he, I had to do it. Yeah, that, that, to me, that's, I didn't that's, even send that's the first testimonial ever. The mm -hmm. first speaker, the six and a half, I didn't send them. Uh, one of my, my reps did. My, one of my dealers did. Sent him the speaker. And then 
uh, somebody said, hey, by the way, Larry, have you looked at Facebook? There's a review. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. So I go look right? at it. Yeah. So then I go and I call Carl to go, hey, because I know him, right? I mean, I haven't seen him. I trained him when I was at Electromedia. Wow. So, because I did <laughs> bit training for him, bit bit uh, bit one and all that stuff, because he worked for Tri-State in New Jersey. And so I went, I called him and said, hey, I, I see you. Where the hell did you get this speaker? Because I didn't send it to you. He goes, oh, I got it from Chris and blah, blah, blah. And he goes, oh, this is a great speaker, but I'm not going to carry your line. But, man, it's spectacular. It's fantastic. Blah, blah, blah. I go, now, wait a minute. <laughs> it's, it's spectacular. It's great, but you don't want to carry it? He goes, I already have enough lines. I don't need more lines. I go, okay. I'm okay. So periodically I would say, hey, you know, I got this new toy. You want to play with it? He goes, sure. So I'll send him something to play with, right? So he got, he had the AIDS. He's had the AIDS this he's had this for four or five months already playing with it beating it up tearing it up going crazy he's had the he's had the 2000 watt bda amp in his in his uh one of his install bays beating up on speakers for four months three months three months just beating the tar out of it trying to break it so he's he's like you know he's my you know, he'll try to break anything. If you give it to him, he'll break it. He'll try. So it's good. And I have a couple dealers like that. Chris Perdue, Justin, Larry Adams. Uh, I have a, a couple of dealers all over the country that are really good to have because you can send them stuff. They'll test it and go, this is bullshit. They'll Don't put it through the ringer. Yeah, this, yeah, is, yeah. this is good. Why don't you do that? That's why that 10 happened. That 10, because I was going to build a shallow 10, lighter weight Neo to be a writer because everything – we were trying to do a cicada in the very beginning was writer, writer, writer. I wasn't going to build any of this crazy stuff, right? And here you are. Well, then what happened is I, I told everybody, and they went, nah, I'll build this kind of woofer. And they told me a BAMA 10IX, build something like that. And I went and looked it up and went, guys, that's like a real woofer, you know, with a giant ferrite magnet. They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I go, it's like 20 pounds. They're like, yeah, yeah, no, there's no problem <laughs> Oh, my bike's really? not heavy enough. Put they don't care. Really? They don't I, go, care. I go, guys, I can build woofers in my sleep upside down drunk. No problem. I can build a woofer or mid-base driver or, or any, whatever you need. That's what you want? They go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, well, then I'm going to build it so it actually works in a bag. Because when you're designing woofers, you got to either, A, build a super killer woofer and then figure out the box it fits in, or figure out the box and build the woofer to fit the box. You know what I mean? So I built the woofer to fit the box. Mm -hmm. Knowing what the box is because it's... To fit the yeah, box. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? Mm -hmm. Because that's the way it needs to be. You need to be... Just don't build something and say, hey, I hope it fits. I hope It's it interesting. Works. You're the first one they said. You built the driver to the enclosure because you already know yes. what the enclosure is. Yeah, I know what sense. it's going to be. It isn't a mystery. You know what I mean? It's not mm -hmm. like I... It's not... It's not like car audio where they're building all kinds of boxes. All what's the material? What's the this volume? What's the shape? Yeah, who yeah, knows? yeah, yeah. It's yeah, pretty yeah, fixed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Up so there. it was much easier from a design standpoint to do that. And I built it. I built 300 mm -hmm. woofers. Just go crazy. Let's build a cool woofer, a mid-base driver. And because it's higher FS. So it's not. Woofers are below 40 hertz. This is 41 hertz. It has a smaller surround. It's not a woofer. You know what I mean? It's not like. The woofers you see with the giant surrounds on them. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is higher sensitivity, louder, uh, stiffer. So I said, I we can. Uh, so I built 300. I go, you know, it's going to take me two or three years to go through these, but that's okay, right? We sold out in five days. I'm like, really? What? Crazy. Yeah. These guys are all crazy. So I, the, can, the, I can do that. Yeah. yeah. I can do crazy. You know okay. I mean? so, so here's my takeaway if you want crazy, you want engineered application specific stuff, um, really le legitimately just for motorcycle. This is not stuff that was built for something else that's been rebranded or no, this is specifically for motorcycle audio. Uh, so, I mean, the blend of the, the, the experience and the history with, with this newfound passion that I can feel for, coming from you, Larry. Uh, certainly, Cicada Audio is something you want to check out. Here's your opportunity. I want to end it off on this. What message do you have for dealers? Who might be watching this for the first time? Who the heck is this Larry guy? Which I doubt. Uh, but the Cicada brand, what message do you have for them to try it out? Give us a try. The, the problem with all this stuff is 
you can read all the reviews. You can hear people. You can hear me tell you how great it is. Oh, it jumps over tall buildings, blah, 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 blah. You know what? Until you play with it and you actually know it's all jive bullshit. You know what I mean? <laughs> this thing's bananas. And this is a six and a half. <laughs> we had him hooked up in the back, and uh, our warehouse is about 100 feet deep. And we had guys, the shipping guys going, can you turn that down? We're trying to do our jobs back here. <laughs> I love right? it. I love it. It's and, and this wasn't mounted in an enclosure or anything like that. We just had it sitting on the bench playing with it. Wow. It's insane. Insane. And, and I, I'm actually going to build a uh, uh, OB. I'm going to build an open baffle with those. With and it sound, it's not just loud. It sounds really good. It's not a yeah. tear my face. If I do a Zobel on it, if I do a Zobel on it, I can make it sound really good. There you go. Yeah. Larry, i got to say thank you for coming in. Um, definitely want to check in with you maybe towards spring around your know, motorcycle season. We'll see what other goodies you have coming. Maybe get maybe get some of your, your customers down here, get some testimonials and have a chat with them to see where, where how crazy this can get. Right, so uh, we have a bike getting. We have a bike game build right now. It was supposed to be filmed today, but we didn't get it done in time. Oh, we we'll circle back. So we will we'll, circle we'll back. It. Oh, you are. Oh, cool. Yeah. All right, Larry. Thank you so much, man. The, the problem is, if you don't have a bike with the system on it, it's like car audio. It's the same. Gotta play it. Everybody says it's great. Well, have you heard one? No. no. Do you have one? No. Well, how do you, exactly. how do you sell it if you can't even hear it? You know? Exactly. In, a, in the real application, right? So. When we move to the new building, which is in 30 days right now, 100 feet away. So I only have to move 100 feet, thank God. Um, we're we're going to buy a Harley, so we have a showroom. It's going to be a, a mock-up work work area. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? But it'll be set up with, with cameras and toolboxes and, and computers and stuff so we can run RTA and we can... And a double bike. And a demo and bike. Because we want, we want to wire it up and show people, look, this is how you do it. Once they see it, because everybody, I mean, everybody, first thing they ask is, is there a YouTube on it? Yeah. First thing. Everybody. Mm -hmm. Do you have a YouTube on that? Have a YouTube? You know, because like that speaker, if Grant picks that speaker up, that's six and a half. That's a little deeper than stock. So people say, well, it's supposed to be a drop in. I go, well, I mean, it's as dropping as it's going to get. But, for example, on a road glide or street glide, uh, road glide, uh, Carlos has to cut like a three and a half inch hole mm -hmm. in the back corner. He actually has a template that he lays mm -hmm. on. The, there's a pod inside the bike. He, he lays it on there and he takes a hole so, whoo, so that that corner can fit in. Fit in. in. Mm -hmm. right? now, some guys, what they do is they take a heat gun and they put the speaker and put four screws in and it sticks out. And they heat it up and they screw it down until it fits in. Right, right, right. A little so, pressure fit. I mean, it so that if somebody's looking for an absolute just drop in, then you need to use CX. Right. But if you if you want the highest performance, well, it's going to take a little bit of work. There's going to be a little bit of, of, of moving around. You and dangle. Around yes. A little bit of depth yeah. difference. Well, yeah, but I mean, rightfully so. Well, it's physics. It's, it's physics. Yeah, exactly. It's physics. Hey, like I always say. There ain't no fairies, pixie dust, or unicorns. It's physics. Physics. Larry, on that note, we're, we're going to wish you, thank you again for coming in. And we really look forward to have, circling back with you in a future session. Okay. Take See care. you guys. Thanks, buddy. I look forward to getting that order in. It should be here pretty soon. Awesome. <laughs> uh, for more information on uh, Cicada Audio, let's put up the uh, website here, cicadaaudio.com. Like Grant said, some really cool uh, YouTube videos on there. Check that out. And uh, you're going to notice there's a lot of coming soon. That's because, man, this guy's busy. Lots of new product coming. And if you're in Canada and you're like, yep, I want to try, well, give the guys at Trends a call. Trendsinc.com, now the official distributor for Cicada Audio in Canada. Grant, um, final message, man. I mean, I don't know what else to say. The, the, the guy's on fire. Cicada. It's, it's a weird cool time to be doing Harley Davidson audio, but it's it a is lot weird, of, but a lot at of least going out the door, I can tell you. But we got to tell people about it, right? This is it. It's uh, the product is is awesome. Like I said, when we first heard that uh, Larry was involved with it, we knew some way somehow uh, we had to get involved. Actually, if you look on his website, typical Larry fashion, anything on his website, by the way, if you read it, it's like listen to the guy talk. It's totally written the way exactly the way he would say it. And at the bottom of it, he says, we don't do international. Don't even ask. 
I noticed and, that. <laughs> uh, so I'm like, oh, he's not going to do international. I'm like, shit. So uh, I called him up and he says, well, if it's you guys, then yeah, we'll do it. But anyone else, no. There so, you go. It, so we're lucky. It's awesome. Um, that's I know, like you said, it's weird, but we need to get this information out because, you know, it's winter time coming soon and guys need to know about what's going on new so they could uh, get on the bandwagon. Guys are building bikes over the winter too. That's it, exactly. Nice. You don't have the guy knocking on your door. Hey, it's 32 degrees outside. I need my bike back. It's exactly. going to be minus 32. Too late by then. Too late by then. <laughs> exactly. Thanks uh, for all the effort and bringing all this product, but we definitely got a better uh, detailed view of what's going on. And uh, yeah, pretty exciting stuff. So thanks for coming in. Thanks for having us on, Ben. Appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. Take care, Grant. There you have it. That was Grant McFadder from Trends Electronics, the new exclusive Canadian distributor for Cicada Audio by Larry Fredericks. That dude is on fire. Really happy that he came in and uh, shared with us his passion, his uh, his uh, design, and his uh, philosophy on everything that's motorcycle audio with Cicada. All right. I want to remind you, continue tuning in to CMA Network starting Monday. We're entering a brand new sessions. That's right. One of my favorites of the year, audio file. Man. Three, four weeks loaded of high-end audio business. All the biggest brands presenting each and every day. Make sure you tune in right through November 10th. And if you're into that stuff, then you're definitely into the contest we got going on with Master Tech Expo, Sirius XM, and Five Axis Innovations win an all-inclusive trip to the show in spring. Register today by going to cmanetworks.com slash giveaway. Totally free to enter. I don't know what you're waiting for if you haven't already. And while you're there, make sure you check out all the great videos we've got on cmanetworks.com, whether it's motorcycle audio, more videos from Trends Electronics, or anything else that interests you. cmanetworks.com is where the 12-volt industry connects. Thanks for tuning in to this CMA Showcase presented by Sirius XM. I'm your host, Ben Wu. Until next time, we connect. Yeah, roll it down. I am. You don't need a car to listen to Sirius XM. You can listen anywhere. You know that, right? What? Kevin Hart's laugh out loud Kevin, you could use your phone. What? What? Alexa, play Kevin Hart's laugh out loud radio on Sirius XM. What? This is how I know you're getting old. I guess that was it. What?